Hi, and welcome to Jay Wallatala Woodburning. Cellular respiration is a set of me metabolic reactions and processes that take place in the cells of organisms to convert chemical energy from nutrients into ATP and then released waste products. The reactions involved in respiration are catabolic reactions, which break large molecules into smaller ones, releasing energy. Respiration is one of the key ways a cell releases chemical energy to fuel cellular activity. The overall reaction occurs in a series of biochemical steps, some of which are redox reactions. Although cellular respiration is technically a combustion reaction, it is unusual one because of the slow controlled release of energy from which the series from the series of reactions. Nutrients that are commonly used by animals and plants in respiration include sugar, amino acids, and fatty acids, and the most common oxidizing agent is molecular oxygen. The chemical energy stored in ATP, the bond of its third phosphate group to the rest of the molecule, can be broken allowing more stable products to form, thereby releasing energy for use by the cell, can then be used to drive processes requiring energy, including biosynthesis or transport of molecules across cell membranes. Aerobic respiration requires oxygen in order to create ATP. Although carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are consumed as reactants, aerobic respiration is the preferred method of pyruvate breakdown in glycolysis and requires pyruvate to the microchondria in order to be fully oxidized by the citric acid cycle. The products of this process of carbon dioxide and water and the energy transferred is used to break bonds in ADP to add a third phosphate group to form ATP. By substrate le level phosphorization, NADH and FADH2. The potential of NADH and FADH2 is converted to more ATP through an electron transport chain with oxygen and protons hydrogen, as the thermal electron acceptors. Most of the ATP produced by aerobic cellular respiration is made by oxidative phosphorylation. The energy released is used to create a chemosmotic potential by pumping protons across a membrane. The potential is then used to drive ATP synthase and produce ATP from ADP and a phosphate group. Often it is depicted that 38 ATP molecules can be produced per oxidized glucose molecule during cellular respiration. Two from glycolysis, two from the Krebs cycle, and about 34 from the electron transport system. However, this maximum yield is never quite reached because of losses due to leaky membranes, as well as the cost of moving pyruvate and ADP into the mitochondrial matrix, and the current estimates range from 29 to 30 ATP per glucose as what is really produced and able to be utilized. 
aerobic metabolism is up to 15 times more efficient than anaerobic metabolism, which yields two molecules of ATP per one molecule of glucose. However, some anaerobic organisms, such as methogens, are able to continue with anaerobic respiration, yielding more ATP by using inorganic molecules other than oxygen as final electron acceptors in the electron transport chain. They share the initial pathway of glycolysis, but aerobic metabolism continues with the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. The post-glycolic reactions take place in the mitochondria, in eukaryotic cells, and in the cytoplasm of proto prokaryotic cells. Although plants are not consumers of carbon dioxide and producers of oxygen via photosynthesis, plant respiration accounts for about half of the CO2 generated annually by terrestrial ecosystems. Glycolysis is a metabolic pathway that takes place in the cytosol of cells of all living organisms. Glycolysis can be literally translated as sugar splitting and occurs with or without the presence of oxygen. In aerobic conditions, the process converts one molecule of glucose into two molecules of pyruvate, pyruvic acid, generating energy in the form of two net molecules of ATP. Four molecules of ATP per glucose are usually produced, but two are consumed as part of the preparatory phase. The initial phosphorylation of glucose is required to increase the reactivity, decrease its stability, in order to, for the molecule to be cleaved into two pyruvate molecules by the enzyme adolase. During the payoff phase of glycolysis, four phosphate groups are transferred to ADP by substrate-level phosphorylation to make four ATP and two NADH are produced when the pyruvate is oxidized. Starting with glucose, one ATP is used to donate a phosphate to glucose to produce glucose 6-phosphate. Glycogen can be converted into glucose 6-phosphate as well with the help of glycogen phosphorylase. During energy metabolism, glucose 6-phosphate becomes fructose 6-phosphate. An additional ATP is used to phosphorylate fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-phosphate by the help of phosphofructosease. Fructose 1,6-phosphate then splits into two phosphorylated molecules with three carbon chains, which later de degrades into pyruvate. Pyruvate is oxidized to acetyl CoA and CO2 by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, PDC. The PDC contains multiple copies of three enzymes and is located in the mitochondria of eukaryotic cells and in the cytosol of prokaryotes. In the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, one molecule of NADH and one molecule of CO2 is formed. The citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle, is when oxygen is present, acetyl-CoA is produced from the pyruvate molecules created from glycolysis. One acetyl-CoA is formed aerobic or anaerobic respiration can occur. When oxygen is present, the mitochondria will undergo aerobic respiration, which leads to the Krebs cycle. However, if oxygen is not present, 
fermentation of the pyruvate molecule will occur. In the presence of oxygen, when acetyl-CoA is produced, the molecule then enters the citric acid cycle, or Krebs cycle, inside the mitochondrial matrix and is oxidized to CO2, while at the same time reducing NAD to NADH. NADH can be used by the electron transport chain to create further ATP as part of oxidative phosphorylation. To fully oxidize the equivalent of one mole glucose molecule, two acetyl-CoA must be metabolized by the Krebs cycle. Two low-energy waste products, H2O and CO2, are created during this cycle. The citric acid, acid cycle is an eight-step process involving 18 different enzymes and coenzymes. During the cycle, acetyl-CoA, two carbons, plus oxalate, four carbons, yields citrate, six carbons, which is rearranged to a more re reactive form called isocitrate, six carbons. Isocitrate is modified to become alpha keto glutarate, five carbons, and a whole bunch of other things that we're not going to get into right now. The net gain from one cycle is 3NADH and 1FADH2 as hydrogen, protons plus electron, carrying compounds, and one high-energy GTP, which usually subsequently which may subsequently be used to produce ATP. Thus, the total yield from one glucose molecule is 6NADH, 2FADH2, and 2ATP. In eukaryotes, oxidative phosphorylation occurs in the mitochondrial crystal it comprises the electron transport chain that establishes a proton gradient across the boundary of the inner membrane by oxidizing the NADH produced from the Krebs cycle. ATP is synthesized by the ATP synthase enzyme when the chemo chemomasmatic gradient is used to drive the phosphorylation of ADP. The electrons are finally transferred to exoxygenous oxygen, and with the addition of two protons, water is formed. So, in essence, cellular respiration is the utilization of glucose or sugars to produce energy and the byproducts of cellular respiration is water and CO2, carbon dioxide. That's the first concept that we're focusing on in this wood burning. The second concept is the idea of street art. Street art is visual art created in public locations for public visibility. It has also been called independent art, post graffiti, neo-graffiti, and guerrilla art. Street art has evolved from the early forms of defiant graffiti into a more commercial form of art, as one of the main differences now lies with the messaging. Street art is often meant to provoke thought rather than rejection among the general audience through making its purpose more evident than that of graffiti. So in general, street art is supposed to carry a message and provoke thought, make the viewer think about something, rather than graffiti typically carries the message of the name of the person doing it. The issue of permission has also come at the heart of street art, 
as graffiti is usually done illegally, whereas street art can nowadays be the product of an arrangement or even sometimes commissioned artwork. However, it remains different from traditional art exposed in public places by its illicit use of spaces in the concept phase. So one of the concepts of doing street art is to build the actual um, platform that you're doing the artwork on as part of the artwork itself, incorporating it. Street art is a form of artwork that is displayed in public, on surrounding buildings, on streets, trains, or other publicly viewed surfaces. Many instances come from the form of guerrilla art, which is intended to make a personal statement about the society that the artist lives within. The work has moved from the beginnings of graffiti and vandalism to new modes where artists work bring messages or beauty to an audience. Some artists may use smart vandalism as a way to raise awareness of so social or political issues, whereas other artists use urban spaces as an opportunity to display personal artwork. Artists may also appreciate the challenges and risks that are associated with installing illicit artworks in public places. A common motive is that creating art in a format that utilizes public space allows artists who may otherwise feel disenfranchised to reach a much broader audience than other styles or galleries would allow. Whereas traditional graffiti artists have primarily used spray paint to produce their work, street art can, can encompass other media, such as mosaic tiling, stencil art, stickers, um, wood blocking, and rock balancing. New media forms, such as video projections onto large city buildings, are an increasingly popular tool for street artists. And the availability of cheap or affordable hardware and software allows such artwork to become competitive with corporate advertisements. Artists are thus able to create art from their personal computers for free, which competes with companies' profits. The origins of street art. Slogans of protest and political or social contemporary graffiti on walls are the precursor to modern graffiti and street art, as, and continue as one aspect of the genre. Street art in the form of text or simple iconic graphics of corporate icons can become well known, yet symbols of an area or era. Some credit the Kilroy was here graffiti of the World War II era as one such early example. A simple line drawing of a long-nosed man peering from behind a ledge. Author Charles Panatti indirectly touched upon the general appeal of street art in his description of the Kilroy graffiti as outrageous, not for what it said, but where it turned up. Much of what can now be defined as modern street art has well-documented origins dating from New York City's graffiti bomb with, with its infancy in the 1960s, maturation in the 1970s, and peaking with the spray-painted full car subway train murals of the 1980s centered in the Bronx. As the 1980s progressed, a shift occurred from text-based works of early in the decade to visually conceptual street art. This period coincides with Keith 
herring subway advertisement subversions and Jean Michael Basquiat's Samo tags. What is recognized as street art had yet to become a realistic career consideration, and offshoots such as stencil graffiti were in their infancy. Wheat pasted poster art used to promote bands and the clubs where they performed, evolved into actual artwork or copy art, and became a common sight during the 1980s in cities worldwide. The group working collectively as Avant was also active in New York during this period. Punk rock music's subversive ideologies were also instrumental to street art's evolution as an art form during the 1980s. Some of the anti-museum mentality can be attributed to the ideology of Maritini, who in 1909 wrote the Manifesto of Futurism, with a quote that reads, we will destroy all museums. Many street artists claim we do not live in a museum, so art should be in public with no tickets. A series of murals by Rene Moncada began appearing on the streets of Soho in the late 1970s, emblazoned with the words, I am the best artist. Rene had described the murals as a thumb in the nose to the art community he left, that he felt he had helped pioneered, but by which he later felt ignored. Recognized as an early act of art provocation, they were a topic of con conversation and debate at the time. Related legal conflicts raised discussion about intellectual property, artists' rights, and the First Amendment. The un unambiguous murals also became a popular backdrop to photographs taken by tourists and art students, as well as for advertising layouts and Hollywood films. The murals were often defaced, only to be repainted by René. Franco the Great, also known as the, the Picasso of Harlem, is another world-famous street artist internationally known for his new art form. There were riots in the streets when Martin Luther King Jr. was slain in 1968. Harlem business owners retaliated by installing grab-looking metal gates in their storefronts. Franco decided to turn a negative into a positive by developing a new art form on the steel gates in 1978. He has painted over 200 gates from the west to the east side of 125th Street on Sundays since then, when stores are closed. 125th Street in Harlem is officially known as Franco's Boulevard because of his magnificent paintings on the metal business gates. Commercial crossover. Some street artists have earned international attention for their work and have made a full transition from street art into the mainstream art world. Some while continuing to produce art on the streets. Keith Herring was among the earliest wave of street artists in the 1980s to do so. Traditional graffiti and street art motifs have also increasingly been incorporated into mainstream advertising. With many instances of artists contracted to work as graphic designers for corporations. Graffiti artist Hayes has produced 
font and graphic designs for music acts such as the Beastie Boys and Public Enemy. Shepard Ferry's street posters of then presidential candidate Barack Obama were reworked by a special commission for use in the presidential campaign. A version of the artwork also appeared on the cover of Time magazine. It is also not uncommon for street artists to start their own merchandising lines. Street art, street art has received artistic recognition with the high profile status of Banksy and other artists. This has led street art to become one of the sights to see in many European cities. Some artists now provide tours of local street art and can share their knowledge, explaining the ideas behind many works, the reasons for tagging, and the messages portrayed in a lot of graffiti work. Berlin, London, Paris, Hamburg, and other cities all have popular street art tours running all year long. In London alone, there are supposedly 10 different graffiti tours available for tourists. Many of these organizations, such as Alternative London, Paris Street Art, Alternative Berlin, pride themselves on working with local artists so visitors can get an authentic experience and not just rehearsed script. Many of these guides are painters, fine art graduates, and other professionals that have founded the medium of street art as a way to exhibit their work. With this commercial angle, they can let people into the world of street art and give them more of an understanding of where it comes from. It has been argued that growing popularity of street art has made it a factor in genderfication. Street art can have legal problems, though. The parties involved, including the artist, the city or municipal government, the independent recipient and the owner of the structure or the medium where the work was displayed. One example is the case in 2014 in Bristol, England, which illustrates the legal, moral, and ethical questions then that can occur. The Mobile Lovers by Banksley was painted on plywood on a public doorway, then cut out by a citizen who in turn was going to sell the piece to fund a boys club. The city government in turn confiscated the artwork and placed it in a museum. Banksley, hearing of the conundrum, then bequeathed it to the original citizen, thinking his intentions were genuine. In this case, as in others, the controversy of ownership and public property as well as the issue of trespassing and vandalism are issues that are legally resolved. Therefore, for this demonstration, we're not actually going to go out and do street art. That's why we're doing a wood burning on just a small piece of wood that depicts both the, the cellular respiration and street art within the artwork that we're producing. But we are only doing pyrography or wood burning in this particular example. And the image is an image of street art incorporated into the overall piece of artwork.